الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله النبي الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم آمين الحمد لله رب العالمين finally we are done with the تفسير of سورة البقرة and tonight we will have a general overview about the surah uh, we know that the theme of the surah is the guidance and today we will talk in general about issues addressed in the surah uh, so topics to be discussed tonight uh, general information about the, the, the surah issues addressed throughout the surah issues addressed in the first juzo the second juzo the third juzo and then a conclusion that's what we are go going to address for tonight. Now, general information about the surah. Uh, it is uh, a Madani surah revealed through the 10 years of Medina. Uh, started from the uh, up, almost up <coughs> upon the arrival of the Prophet ﷺ and continued till uh, his last uh, days in Medina. It, it is called Surah Al-Baqarah and some Tabi'een called it Fustat Al-Quran. Fustat Al-Quran, the Fustat is the big pavilion. Uh, Amr ibn As, when he built uh, the city in, in, uh, in Egypt, he called it Al-Fustat, which is Cairo's today. It's a, uh, so it's a pavilion that in, includes many things. So the surah is huge, the biggest surah in Quran, the longest surah in Quran, and it includes so many uh, issues. So it is worth to be called Fustat al-Quran. Now, another information is about the surah. It is the longest surah that includes the longest ayah and the last revealed ayah also. And it's the first surah in the chronology of the Mus'haf that includes Al-Huruf Al-Muqatta'a, Alif Lam Mim. And then Ali Imran after that, Alif Lam Mim, and the other surahs uh, came in different locations in the Mus'haf. And it covers more than two juzu. It covers the first and the second and part of the, the third juzu. It addresses all issues addressed in Quran. There is no issue have been addressed in Quran without being addressed in the Surah. So the Aqidah, for those who attended the last uh, uh, tafsir of the last three ayat, we say that the last ayah, it talks about the pillars of the Iman. And the first two ayat, it talks about Iman bil ghaib in the unseen. So when you talk about Iman in the unseen and Iman billah and the angels and the books and the messengers and the hereafter. And uh, so this covers all uh, aspects of Aqidah. And then uh, it addresses many issues. The Da'wah at the beginning of the Surah the human nature in many uh, spots in the surah, stories of previous nations, especially, of course, the, story, the children of Israel, origin of the creation, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels that he would place a, a khalifa in the earth, and how did he teach Adam whatever is needed, inviting people to think the aqidah, the hereafter, the mission of the ummah, and it has so many ahkam shari'iyah that covers almost all types of the ahkam shari'iyah. Ahkam shari'iyah related to the ibadat, related to the mu'amalat, transactions, related to the family law, women, marriage, divorce, and so on, as we'll see, related to the uh, penal code, related to the jihad, and so on. So there is no issue, no category of ahkam shari'iyah addressed in the Quran 
without being as part of it being addressed in the in this surah. So it actually all issues addressed in Quran are addressed in this surah. Now, what are the issues addressed in the surah? First of all, why do we need this? Why do we need to know and issues addressed uh, throughout the surah? Number one, since the, so these issues are addressed in Quran, of course we need to know what is addressed in Quran because it is an address to us. So it relates to us. We are responsible about practicing, about uh, abiding, about uh, uh, implement, implementing uh, what is in the Quran. And when we, as we'll see, we, you can develop a map for the contents of the surah. So you have, imagine in your mind, a general map about the topics addressed in the surah. And we'll appreciate the coherency of Quran, as we will see. And then appreciate the style of the Quran. We keep saying al quran Kareem is not a, a book of uh, stories. It's not even a book of, of, of law yet. It talks about the story of uh, of Israel in different areas. It's not just addressed in one part. It is addressed mainly in the first part, and you will see that it had been addressed again in, uh, later on in certain spots in the second and, and even the third juzo. Uh, so uh, it, 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 it addresses Hakam Sharia rules, but without labeling the Quran as quote unquote a book of law. The style of Al Quran al Kareem is not the style of any book of law. The books of law, or the, that includes certain stipulations in the traffic code, or in the corporation code, or in the civil law, they, they, they have certain method to present these stipulations. It's not as uh, mentioned in, in the Quran, as, as we, uh, we noticed throughout the tafsir. And then we will talk about issues addressed in the first juzo, the second juzo, and the third juzo. So let's start with Musallah in the first juzo. The first ayat, ayah 1 to 39, talking about guidance, talking about the, 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 the three kinds of human beings, uh, talking about the da'wah of people to Quran, present to them, here is the Quran, bring something similar to it, and then talk about the origin of the creation before creating Adam, what happened before creating Adam and after that. And then he was placed in the earth. Now, Ayah 40 to 48 talks about the children of Israel, reminding them of Allah's favors bestowed upon them. And then, 49 to 74, this, their situation, their attitude with Musa alayhi salam, worshiping the calf, uh, repeated disobedience, violating the Sabbath rules, and then the cow incident, and their argument with, with the Musa alayhi salam. Uh, tell us what, is, what uh, how does it look like? Tell us it is young, it is old, what is the color of it? What is it? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam said that they were, uh, if they just went and slaughtered any cow, it would be uh, enough. They started becoming very stubborn and keep asking what are the qualifications, what are the what is the description of the cow, and whenever they ask a question, more restrictions will be added. And then, uh, Ayah 75 to 132, uh, stand the Jews took towards the Prophet ﷺ. Within this, there are two ayat. Ayah number 102 talks about magic. <coughs> We're not going to go over the tafsir, but it denies that the magic was sent uh, uh, to Sulaiman alayhi salam. Sulaiman alayhi salam was a prophet. So he wouldn't uh, be uh, calling for magic. 
And of course, the tafsir of the ayat is not even uh, sent down to the angels. So it is uh, the function of shayateen al-ins. Uh, and then the ayah 106 talks about abrogation, nasakh. And then go back to the message of Ibrahim. Ayah number 142 to 140, uh, 124, uh, sorry, to 141, building the Kaaba. Warning those who deviate from Ibrahim's call. Yaqub uh, advising his children, what are you going to follow? And they told him, we are going to follow the, your religion and the religion of your fathers. Uh, and we are going to submit to him. And emphasizing the advice again in Ayah 135 to 137. And then the Ayah states that Neither Ibrahim, nor Isaac, nor Jacob, even the Asbat, none of them were Jews or Christians. It, is, it, it emphasizes uh, this fact. They were Muslims. Now, the word Muslim here, it is worth to mention, it can be used as an adjective, sifa, or it can be used as a proper noun. When we talk about people who are following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are using the word Muslim as a noun. When it talks about people following uh, the previous prophets, they submitted to Allah, to God. So the being Muslim was their, their, their adjective. So uh, then ayah number 141 uh, concludes with Declaring this ummah already passed before you. To them belongs what they earned, and to you belongs what you earned. And you will not be asked about what they have done. Then the second juzo will start after that. The second juzo starts with the I 142 uh, to 151. This ayah talk about the Qibla, uh, stating that the first Qibla, which was towards Bayt al maqdis was defined by God. Although we know that there's no ayah in Al Quran Kareem telling us, instructing us to pray towards Al Masjid al Aqsa. But the ayah here, ayah 142, it tells us that the, the old Qibla, it was set by God. So, which means, that Muhammad Sallallahu received a revelation instructing him to pray towards Jerusalem or Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And then this was changed to Mecca, to Al-Kaaba. And Allah told us that instruction was given to him and it, def it was defined, the first Qibla, it was defined by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And then the ayah also talks about this, uh, this it's especially 142, 143, 144, talk about the mission of the Muslim Ummah. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَاءً عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا And thus we made you a balanced Ummah so that you may be witnesses for or against mankind and the messenger will be witness for or against you. And then Ayah 157 talks about the patience. And then I-158 talked about Safa and Marwa. I-159 to 160 talks about uh, concealing the message. And then a threat to those who reject the message. And from 163 to 177, uh, features of the Ummah. Tawheed, inviting people to think about this universe in order to reach from this thinking to uh, the fact that it is created. And then some rules, 168 to 176, especially regarding food and regarding the animals which you are allowed to eat, which are, we are not allowed to eat. Now, some of these rules were previously revealed in Surah Al-An'am. And now it is addressed within another context. The context, the context here is this second juzu start defining our, uh, our mission 
killing us that the previous people, children of Israel, failed to, 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 to comply with the mission they were asked to, 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 to deliver. Uh, they gave covenant with God and they broke the covenant. They were told to do certain things and they, refused, uh, they rejected that and thus they uh, were, became subject for uh, certain punishments. Now, you Muslims are commissioned with this mission. This mission includes many things, Tawheed and thinking about the universe, and even if it's going to include the compliance with the Ahkam Sharia. So all of this is within our mission, within our responsibility. And it is be, uh, beyond, without, within our capacity. Nothing is, as we will see in the last three ayat, Nothing is uh, be, uh, beyond our capacity. And then I-177 introduces the concept of Birr, that the Birr is not to turn to the east or to the west, but the Birr is to believe in Allah, because there was a debate after that, okay, why did they change the Qibla? So the ayah is telling them, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَنْ تُوَلُّوا وَجُوَكُمْ شِطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ كُبْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ and the rest of the ayah. The, bir, the, bir, the, the the most important act of virtue is not to where do you direct your salah. You can have, you can direct your salah towards Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and that was Bir. And now you are directing it towards Mecca, towards Al-Kaaba and this is Bir. That at that time was Bir and now this, the new rule is Bir. So don't talk about uh, don't limit the concept of Bir to this aspect. Al Bir is to believe in Allah in the hereafter and to fulfill the duties uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us to maintain good relationship with people, to be obedient with, uh, to our parents, and so on. And spending from whatever uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us. And then I 178 to 203, many rules, rules regarding homicide crime and what's the punishment, Al-Qasas, capital punishment for, the, for this person who committed such uh, crime. And then fasting, and then Hajj, and Jihad, and spending, and moving back to the Hajj, and then the Dua, in the days of the Hajj, especially Ayam Tashriq, and people's attitude towards the Dua. This tells us that this is not uh, a style of a legal book. Although all of these things include certain rules, certain stipulations, but the way it is addressed, moving from one issue to another and connecting every issue with the belief with the Iman. And then talk about the Hajj and what, what should we have dua in, in the Hajj, especially in the last, uh, in the Ayam Tashriq. And it tells us that people, some people will make dua for their life. They don't care about the hereafter. And they will not get anything in the hereafter. And others will make dua that Allah will give them good in this life and in the hereafter. So they will get uh, their share in both. And we, those who remember the tafsir of the ayah, we quoted uh, one great mufassir, Abu Hayyan, in his book, Al-Bahr al-Muhiyyit. He said the ayah is giving us two types of people. You either make wrong dua or you make the right dua. And of course, we should have deal with the second group that is making the right dua. He said, yet some Sufi claim that there, are third, there is third category that will not at all try to make any dua because they think if you make dua, you are not satisfied with Qadarullah. You are objecting it. You want to change it. And he said, this is... This is, in our language, this is nonsense. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to make dua. But we have to make the dua in the right way, with the right mindset. 
So that is Allah I mean to, to get at least the reward of the dua. Then ayah 204 to, to, uh, to 20, different types of people and reminder from Allah. And then ahkam sar'iyya, regarding parents, again, and regarding jihad, going back to jihad, regarding alcohol, alcohol and gambling. It did not prohibit it. The prohibition came in Surah Al-Ma'idah, but it addressed it. Telling people that, uh, oh Muhammad, they are asking you about alcohol. يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر. قل فيهما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس وإثمهما أكبر من نفعهما. Tell them that there are uh, great harms in it, and there are some benefits because those who manufacture it, who those who press it, will will sell and make money. As an example, he says, and I says. وإثمهما أكبر من نفعهما. Its uh, harm is outweighs its benefits. So some people started from then said, "What's the point in drinking it if its uh, ha uh, effect, uh, negative effect, harm will be much more than what benefits expected from it?" And then Ayah two twenty one to two forty two. Family law talks about marriage and shirk. You are not allowed to get married from a mushrika. And then some family rules, woman rules, divorce, nursing, rada, waiting period, idda for different uh, types of people. As you notice, there are 21 uh, ayat talking about this topic only. And some other issues regarding women are addressed in Surah An-Nisa, but the number of the ayat regarding women addressed in Surah An-Nisa are much less than this. And you have Surah Al-Talaq, just talk about divorce, but even the number of the ayat addressing the issue is much less than, than this. That's why Surah al uh, actually, another name for Surah Al-Baqarah called Surah Al-Nisa Al-Kubra. Surah Al-Nisa Al-Kubra, the major Surah of women. So Surah Al-Nisa is the minor Surah of women. Al-Baqarah is the major Surah of women. And you have uh, uh, Al-Talaq talking about uh, the divorce. And of course, we have some other family laws uh, addressed in Surah Al-Nur, which we, inshallah, we will start discussing after finishing Surah Al-Baqarah, bi'ithni Allah Azza wa Jal. And then, Ayah 243 to 252, the children of Israel again. And by this, the second juzo will be concluded. Now, the third juzo starts with Ayah 253, referring to the messengers before that, and uh, Isa, son of Maryam, that these are the prophets. Uh, we gave them the book, we gave them the message, and we preferred one above the other. But of course, we cannot uh, make such preference because to us, all of them are the same. Uh, like in the last three ayats, we don't uh, distinguish uh, between his messengers. But Allah is the one who said, we gave preference for some over the other. And then to Ayah, uh, Ayah 254, talking about spending, 255, Ayah Al-Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum, and we talked about this, it took us, I think, five weeks, talking about the tafsir of Ayah Al-Kursi. And then, la ikraha fi al-deen, no compulsion in religion, and then talks about the story of Ibrahim with the, with the, with the tyrant ruler who tried to challenge uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, astaghfirullah, uh, when Ibrahim told him, uh, Allah uh, is the one who bring, brings the life and the death. So he told them, I can bring the life and the death. And how that fool person thought that 
if he sends uh, give uh, some person a death sentence, he's killing them. If he pardons him, he's giving him life again. So Ibrahim asked him another question. You know, uh, God brings the sun from the east. The sunrise is from the east side. Can you can you change the law and let the sun rise from the west? He was stunned. And then talk about reviving uh, the revival of the death and gave us two stories. The example of the man that who passed by a village and he died 100 years. Uh, that village was uh, not a uh, living town. It was uh, ruined town. So he said, how can this village be uh, brought back to the life? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him back to die, uh, calls him to die and uh, along with his donkey and then he brought him back to the life. He told him, how long did you spend? He said, a few days. He said, but you spent 100 years and look to your uh, everything not, uh, didn't get changed. Thus Allah will bring the uh, revive uh, the de deceased ones to the life. And then Ibrahim when he asked uh, Musa, uh, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how he would he bring the life back to the deceased ones. Haven't you believed? He said, Bala, surely I believe. I want the tranquility of my mind. Now, we don't need to see the process of the revive, reviving the death. Why? Because already this had been tested before us. Ibrahim himself asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ibrahim showed him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him this and this is mentioned in the Quran uh, in an absolute ayah. So we believe it. That's it. We don't need to see it. The, the one who uh, created us, the one who caused this to happen caused Ibrahim to carry out certain actions, slaughtering some birds, dividing them into different portions, put each one of them in, one, in a, uh, a top of a hill or a small mountain around him, and then call them, they will come back. So he saw the, the, the process. But of course, he didn't see how. You know, the mechanism. He just saw them dead and he saw them uh, coming up and coming to him. So we believe that God uh, brings uh, rev revived the deceased ones and we will be revived and we will be resurrected after, of course, uh, when the hour comes. So we believe in this. Alhamdulillah Rabbil And then Ayah 261 to 274 is pending and its etiquette. You notice that we talked about spending before and now talks about spending again. And then <clears throat> Ayah 275 to 281 talking about riba. Riba, of course, is addressed in another surahs, in Ali Imran, as an example. <clears throat> ayah 282 comes the longest ayah in Quran. And Ayah 283 related to the Ayah 282. Uh, ayah to Dain, they call it Ayah to Dain, the Ayah of uh, documenting the loans, whatever you owe, how to document it. And then 284 to, eight, to 286, uh, the last three Ayat, we talked about them uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, and then the end of the surah with its dua, the last uh, dua. Okay. Now, if we conclude, we say that the first juzo functions as the basis for what comes after. It is a summary for the entire human life before the creation of Adam. 
all the way to what happened to the children of Israel and to the prophets after that and uh, clearing them saying last I first uh, Jesus that you they, the, this this ummah came before you uh, to them belongs what they earned and against them is what they did uh, and you will not be asked about them and then have the second juzo that starts with the qibla and defining the muslim mission and start talking about the hakam sharia which continued throughout the surah so the second juzo defines our mission and the direction and addresses the hakam sharia and the third juzo continue with the hakam sharia and concluding the surah these are the topics which are addressed in the surah but we can see that it's not addressed in 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 certain uh, classical or legal manner rather it is addressed in such a way that it gives you a hukum sharii moves to another hukum sharii uh, linking the hukum sharii to the iman to the aqidah and so on now uh, we said that we need to appreciate uh, the coherence of Quran. How, how can it be coherent? We have many Mufassirin, as an example, uh, Razi and Abu Hayyan uh, and Al-Biqa'i tried throughout the tafsir to show the, the, the uh, connection of the ayah with what comes before and what, what comes after that. And then we have, I mean, Islah, he also talked about this. And then we have uh, a person, Dr. Raymond Farin, uh, talked about this. Uh, the structure and Quranic interpretation, a style of symmetry and coherence in Islam's holy book. The author, Roman uh, Farin. Roman Farin is uh, American, uh, he was in the Marines, uh, based on what I know, based on his resume, and he uh, had PhD in Arabic language, alhamdulillah, mashallah, became Muslim, and he is the chairman of the Arabic department in the American University in Kuwait. He wrote this book, uh, an amazing book, and uh, uh, he talks about what is called the ring theory. Now, he mentioned this book uh, in, in, in the introduction. He said, essentially, this book has two objectives. Number one, first, it seeks to refute, indeed, to lay to rest the long-standing criticism of disjointedness and to encourage in its place an increased appreciation for the organization of Quran. So some people started saying that Quran Kareem is just scattered uh, words and sentences without a system. They are disjoined. So he says this book is meant to lay to rest this, this accusation. So he, he actually, I recommend uh, if anyone who can, uh, can get a copy of the book to get it and, and actually read it. Uh, maybe in Shalom, uh, and he's talking about uh, the framing the Quran, the chapter as unit, and uh, he talks about uh, the pairs, three, two surahs, he says they, they establish a pair, then chapter four, pairs two, chapter five, uh, chapter groups. As an example, we have in Ulum al Quran what is called uh, Al Hawamim. Al Hawamim is one group that also any surah, all of them start with Hamim or Al Mi'un. Al Mi'un, uh, the surah that start, uh, are over than 100. Uh, you have a sub tuwal the seven long, uh, long surahs at the beginning. Maybe except Surah Al-Anfal, it's 70-something. Uh, 
So he says we have these groups, and but there is something uh, common. You can these these groups share, and then he talks about uh, chapter six, the central group, and he said in his uh, introduction he said he read that this paper by Mary Douglas thinking in circles an essay uh, on ring composition. This man applied it to many surahs and showing us the, those surahs establish a ring, <coughs> which shows symmetry. And even he applied it to the Arabic poetry before Islam. Arabic poetry before Islam, because some people said Arabic poetry is not related to each other, to show that there are rings which means they are symmetrical. So Surah Al-Baqarah, he says, it's, uh, this is the ring for Surah Al-Baqarah. As a, you see, A, B, C, D, and then D uh, plus C plus B plus A plus, or dash. So the beginning, A and A plus relate to each other. B and B, C and C, D and D, and then the central is the Kaaba, central theme of the surah, which came the central of the center of the surah from Ayah 142 to 152. Now he says that the first uh, category from one to twenty. He divided uh, we, we, at the beginning. We said one to twenty and twenty one to thirty nine. The belief, the, the faith, and the creation, and the origin of, of the creation and Allah's knowledge. So they are actually divided into two uh, sub segments. The one to 20 talk about the guidance, the faith, the unbelief, the three categories of people, and then 21 to 39 talk about the other aspect. And then for, for it to 103, the law given to the children of Israel. And then number D, 104 to 141, Abraham's test, Ibrahim, Abraham's test. And then the Kaaba. And then Muslims tested. So there is, there is connection here. Abraham's testing, here's a Muslim testing. And number C, the law given to Israel here, the law given to Muslim. Number B, uh, again, from 254 to 284, Allah's creation. And then 286, 285 to 286, the faith and uh, uh, principles of faith versus also the versus the non-belief. So as you see the, the there is there is symmetry in it. In in the in, 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 in the Quran. So uh, by this, we are done, inshallah, alhamdulillah, by Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, as you know, uh, next uh, time we will start talking about Surah Al-Nur, that's what uh, the brothers wanted, and it's very relevant surah, and you'll see it is addressing many issues related to us. So, uh, by this, I would conclude. Subhanakallahum wa hamdika la ilaha illa ant, nasakhruka Allahumma natubu ilayk. Allahumma jahal istima'ana hadha istima'an ma'asuma, wa jahal tafarukuna ba'dihi tafarukuma marfuma, wa la tada'fina wa la baynana shakiyan wa la mahruma, wa la asri ina al-insana la fi khusf, illa al-ladhina aman wa amru salihat wa tawasaw bil-haq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The question and answer will be after uh, 